Okay, Rolling Stones fans, I know I haven't did an album review in the last couple months, so I'm so sorry, I apologize. But we are getting to the classic, classic early 70s period of the... And who doesn't love that period of the Rolling Stones, right? We've got Mick, Ta Mick Taylor now. Um, he is a... Uh, um, He's a full member of the band. You know, he is uh, full time in this band until 74. So what Al am I talking about here? Talking about Sticky Fingers. What a classic album. So many people have told me, or not told me, but I've been seeing a lot of people talk about this album. You don't need to review this album. I mean, how much do you need to say? Oh, I got a lot to say about Sticky Fingers. Are you kidding me? I just listened to this album, and this is absolutely just what can be said, right? You know, Sticky Fingers in the UK was the ninth studio album, but in the United States, it was the 11th. It went platinum, but triple platinum in the UK. Alrighty, so there you go. <laughs> Rolling Stone's 500 Greatest Albums of All Time. This was ranked now, it was originally ranked back um, in 2019 or wherever it was. But they decided to revise the whole 500 greatest, shut up, it's at 104. Are you kidding me? This should be much higher. 104, that's, that's pitiful. This was the third album produced by Jimmy Miller. This album was released April the 23rd, 1971. We got a big number one hit from this album, Brown Sugar, right? This album was recorded dating back to the Let It Bleed sessions, um, dating back to March the 22nd through the 31st of 1969, December the 2nd and 4th of 69 as well. Also February and October the 31st of Halloween, that was the very last recording date. Um, the last recordings was done on October Halloween of 1970. So we got a couple of studios that they uh, record this album in, including Muscle Shoals, Alabama. Of course, a lot of that nitty gritty, uh, you know, swampy, you know, Delta, you know, that kind of stuff was all recorded in Alabama because, you know, hey, Southern, you know. We also got Olympic and Trident Studios in London and such as Star Groves, which was another studio. Now, <laughs> most people think that this is very naughty, the album cover. Most people think it's, you know, vulgar. You can thank Andy Warhol for that. <laughs> you know, because he was the one that photographed, you know, did the photography for the album cover. And John Pache was the designer for the tongue and logo. Because this was the debut of their new label. The Rolling Stones label, right? That would that would be uh, present to um, their last album, which was six years ago, which was Blue and Lonesome. So yeah, there you go. Everyone knows the, the logo, right? Everybody knows it, you know. Um, this has been one of the most, probably one of those albums that I listen to and I just get, uh, I get really, really, uh, Something about it, I get so, so pumped up. I, I feel so relieved a little bit, especially some of those beautiful, especially at the end. I mean, we're talking about Dead Flowers and Moonlight Miles. It's absolutely fantastic tracks. Um, we got so many, uh, so much great people playing on this album, including Paul Buckmaster. Um, he was an arranger, a string arranger. Um, he did the great strings on Space Oddity. He does the string arrangements on Sway and Moonlight, Moonlight Miles. It's brilliant. I love it. And who doesn't love Ry Cooter? Ry Cooter did a lot, a lot of uh, session playing. He did the slide guitar on Sister Morphe. Beautiful. Jim Dickinson on Piano for Wild Horses. Uh, Rocky Dijon Congas on Can't You Hear Me Knockin'. Nicky Hopkins, of course, perfect on Sway and Can't You Hear Me Knocking, and Bobby Keys. Now, this was kind of the first time here that the Rolling Stones were featuring saxophone in their music. 
So he does very well on a couple of very good tracks, including the first track on the album, Brown Sugar, right? Brilliant. Jack Nietzsche does, of course, Jack Nietzsche always uptempts the, the quality on Sister Morphine. He plays piano. And who doesn't love Billy Preston? Billy Preston is amazing. Oh my God, I love the organ he's, that he does on uh, Can't You Hear Me Knocking when they get into the jam, you know? And I got the, uh, yeah, and, um, or, let me see. Yeah, I think I think that's the only song he plays organ on, I believe. But I could be wrong, though. He Or, and I got the blues, sorry. And I got the blues he played. Because I, I do hear Billy Preston in that song. Yes, indeed. Trumpet piano done by Jim Price on a Moonlit Mile, of course, great. And I got the blues. And of course, good old Ian Stu plays the first track and Dead Flowers on uh, on this album. So, um, great stuff on here. I think this is this is, this is, this album has been well deserved. It's been re released many of times. It's been released uh, not that long ago. In fact, I think twenty fifteen, and I think they also had a fiftieth anniversary remastered edition, I believe. And a 2009 mix. So they mix this album all the time. They mix this album quite often. So, um, you know, there's a super deluxe set. I think that's the 50th anniversary. You get all the outtakes from, you know, certain sessions and stuff. So, um, yeah, this was during their period, their height, you know. So let's go and get started. The first track is Brown Sugar. Who doesn't love that opening? Opening core playing there by, uh, you know, Keith. In, it's in C major, and it's so excellent. You know, it almost has like a, a tremolo feel a little bit. You know what I mean? Um, this is just a classic Stone song. This is a staple. I mean, they play this song all the time, but you know damn well, for me, I don't get sick of this song. This is fantastic. It was recorded back December and April or excuse me, it was recorded in December of 69. Went number one, and the B-side was Bitch, which is another great one, which is the opening to side two. So isn't that funny? We got side one opening with Brown Sugar, the other side being Bitch. Um, it was released a number one single um, back in April of that year. And, you know, they performed on the top of the pops doing this song. Um, this was recorded in Muscle Shoals. So it's got that really uh, southern feel, you know. Um, you know, most people, uh, you know, think that this is a naughty song, you know. <laughs> um, you know, where they, uh, you know, brown sugar, oh, why you taste so good. I love that. Saxophone done by Bobby Keys. He's so great with that, you know. Very, very well done with that solo that he does. A really excellent song here. You know, we got Mick Taylor really ripping that guitar going on. And we got the maracas and shit, you know, all that kind of stuff. You know, yeah, maracas, you know, and brown sugar. It's such an excellent song, you know what I mean? It's just one of those riff mas masterful uh, classics done by Keith Richards, you know what I mean? When you think of just riffing by Keith, you think of, you know, all those uh, honky-tonk women... Jumping Jack Flash, you know, all that, all those great songs. He was the one that perfected it very, very well. And, um, this is excellent. It's such an excellent song. You know, people claim it's about slavery, um, you know, where it could be true. It's about a white male and a black female doing sex. I don't know. Then we get the second track, Sway. What a beautiful song. A lot to say about Sway here. It's in the it's an F major, so they do a counting of one, two, three, four, and they get into it. This is so great. This is the debut here. Mick Jagger doing electric guitar here. Great. That opening electric here. Mick Taylor, I mean, excuse me, Mick Jagger, very underrated guitarist, especially acoustic. He plays acoustic on Moonlight Mile. Oh, Beautiful. He would do that for the several next albums, but Mick Jagger, I gotta say that right off the bat, he is a very underrated guitarist. I'm sorry. 
and people say, eh, you know, he's okay, but you know, he's good. Shut up. <laughs> really love the great electric. Uh, Mick Taylor here does, does fantastic. Um, really love the string arrangements as well, done by that uh, Paul Buckmaster. Beautiful strings, gorgeous. And Charlie with the propulsive drumming. You gotta love his his early 70s, like, you know, dating back to maybe Let It Bleed, where he's really like, just, you know what I mean? Perfect, I love it. Charlie Watts, man, just fantastic. And the lines, it's just that demon life has got me in its way, you know what I mean? Um, I wrote on here as well, wonderful, constructed, um, naming, you know, calling it a soulful rocker, you know, and uh, you gotta love Nicky Hopkins. Nicky Hopkins always just flat out makes everything great with the stones here, with that beat, that barroom piano style playing that he does, you know, really good, really upbeat, soulful, whatever you name it, whatever you want to name this song, you know, sway, beautiful. Then are you kidding me? The next song is one of my favorites. One of my favorite ballads by the Rolling Stone, Stones, and that is Wild Horses. Couldn't drag me away. G major. You gotta love. That's interesting with Keith Richards. The way with the way he opens up, especially with the acoustic guitar, it's just it opens up. It opens up opportunities to make the songs for what it is. Keith Richards, beautiful opening by him. You know, it's dealt with, uh, you know, never turning your back, you know, that sort of thing. You know, your, you know, regret, re you know, regretting on life. That's what the song totally, I totally feel the, the gratitude of this song, you know. You know, we got um, Jim, I'm trying to remember what his name was again, uh, Jim Dickinson, I believe, um, or no, um, yes, uh, he plays piano on here, beautiful piano by Jim Dickinson, um, you know, I, I do also love on here as well, I have to switch papers here all the time, um, the electric playing here by Keith, really, really well done, you know, really great, uh, uh, electric flourishes. I, I call it flourishing. I don't know. I don't know what else you can call it, but you know, um, this was a hit for the Stones. This was a pretty well notable hit, you know, obviously, you know, <laughs> this went to number 28 and was recorded in the same studio as Brown Sugar. It was released in the summer of 71. It was recorded December 69 and February of 70. So it was like right around the time that they were recording Brown Sugar. Um, this is just one of those songs. I just, it gets me right here, man. Whenever you're talking about wild horses, beautiful. You know, every, you know, I, I have that Hot Rocks, you know, that, that really great compilation, which came out in 71. And, uh, oh my God, every time I listen to that, I never, ever skip wild horses. I just listen to that thing. Oh, it's the beauty, the nature of it. It's fantastic. Here's another great Rolling Stone staple. Let's get jump to it here. Fourth track here, Can't You Hear Me Knocking. Now for any of you that are around my age or you know any millennials, <laughs> you know that this song was off of Guitar Hero 2. Of course, re-recorded, you know. You know eh. Anyways, this song was recorded in March and April of 1970. This was recorded in Olympic Studios in London. Um, yeah. Who doesn't love Can't You Hear Me Knocking? Um, starts off with a G note done by Keith. You know, once again, with that great opening acoustic. He does that quite often here. Um, with Mick Taylor accompanying with the electric the electric uh, part coming in as well. Where he's kind of just playing, playing around, picking kind of, if you will. And I love Nicky Hopkins. He does great here on the piano. Excellent. Um... So, yeah, it has, like, a cool opening groove to it, sort of. You know, can you hear me knocking? Can you hear me knocking on my windowsill? You know? Um, but the one thing that really makes a song so special, and that's probably for everyone else that probably has heard this song many times, is the way that kind of goes into a, um, almost like a jam, like a really, really good jam 
um, which almost sounds a little jazzy at times. Um, I think Jagger has claimed that it's not based on, you know, Santana, because it almost has like a Santana fusion kind of um, approach a little bit. But, uh, you know, Mick Jagger claims that's not really intended to be a, a song that they could they can do it somewhat um the story was that that you know they they had a they kept going they thought the tape was uh they thought the tape was done but the tape was still going and you know we get the seven minute song here great and we also get bobby keys here which he sounds very uh which sounds jazzy at times jazz fusiony at times oh i hate to say that on rolling stones i don't think they would ever touch ground <laughs> on fusion but you know, hey it just sounds like that, right? You know, very deep organ play by Billy Preston. Fantastic. Jazzy electric chords by Keith or once again by Nick Taylor. It could have been either one of those guys. Um, yeah, it's great. It has like a two part feel to it. You know, the Ro Rolling Stones are best for doing that, you know, for some songs that they that they do. But this is great. It works very, very well. You know, can you hear me knocking? What a great one. Then we get the last track on side one. You gotta move. This was this is a this is a good one. This is a very very good song here. They're, they're they got they get this thing down packed very well with the Delta Blues. Very good. They do that in the previous albums that they kind of did, you know. And by the way, I forgot to mention Jimmy Miller produced. Yeah. <laughs> And he does play a little bit. I think he does play congas on some of the percussion work here, Jimmy Miller. Um, but once again, yeah, it sounds like some off a of Let It Bleed, something like that. Um, you know, where we get the electric sliding done by Mick Taylor. Great. And Mick Jagger, hey, he perfects this that old black man voice very, very well. Excellent. I love that when he does that. You know, he did that, of course, dating back to the earlier albums, the you know early 60s. You know, the early period of the covers, you know, the R&B covers and all that, you know, very well done. Um, you know, Charlie's bass, drum, and hi-hat high, high, high work um, is great. You know, it, you know he, 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 I think he fits that mold very well when he kind of does it. He perfects that very, very well. You know, it's a three, two-minute song, but it's good. You know what I mean? You got to move. Hey, we flip the album over. Don't have the album, unfortunately. If we get Bitch, Key of G. Man, what a blisterous song. Love this song. Um, da -da 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 -da. Wait, da -da -da -da. da -da -da -da. You know what I mean? <laughs> almost, it almost has like a kinks, you know, rocking feel a little bit. Like a, you, you really got me sort of. Da -da 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 -da. And a little bit of a, ooh, a little bit of a hint of. What's to come a little bit down the road, like Leonard Skinner, sort of? So, Kinks, Leonard Skinner, I kind of hear. Very biting, very biting, like I put on here, here. Very biting, bluesy, hard rock song. There you go. <laughs> Mick Jagger's vocals. I feel like he's he's so, like, energized here. It's very good. You know, he feels the confidence in himself here. Um, love that electric. There's a lot of rhythm electric here done by Keith. And as well as Mick Taylor, um, you know, very bluesy, you know, the bluesy chords, I definitely hear it very, very well. And I just love that deep, deep saxophone in this by Bobby Keys. Excellent. Um, it's very uh, provocative with the lyrics, you know, you know what I'm saying? This really like, ooh, just get you. You know what I mean? Really good song. I don't think most people ever talk about this song. But bitch, this is a great one. Love that song. Um, let's see what else we got here. So, after that we got I Got the Blues. Really good one. I think most people don't really... Um, I think people don't really care about the song as much. But, um, you know, such as You Gotta Move. You know, some people claim, eh, yeah, it's alright, you know. I Got the Blues, are you kidding me? Um, this... this this song really reminds me. I'm pretty sure that's everyone else because I've know because I, I know a lot of people can probably relate or probably know darn well that this is definitely uh, contribute to you know a tribute to Otis Redding to the old old period the old like you know just flat out soul 
This is such a soulful track here. Um, I, also, I also put it on here, and it should be clean as a masterpiece. I mean, it's so good. Um, just love the, the, the nature, the bluesy nature of this song. It's just excellent. Um, also with the, you know, the nostalgia, um, just, just that mid sixties, uh, you know, with Billy Preston, he, he adds in like it's an Otis Redding song. Um, like I've been, uh, loving you too long. It reminds me of that song and it feels like he's kind of like, no, I wouldn't say mimicking, but he's putting his own spin to it. You know what I mean? But with, uh, Billy Preston with that organ, just so good. He just, just, he just does it so well. And once again, with the very bright and almost sporadic saxophone by Bobby Keys, excellent. Jim Price also provides the trumpet piano here. Um, but yeah, this is a really good one. It, it just settles you in and it really brings you back. Like, you know what I mean? Maybe this is meant to be a tribute to him, Otis. But it's just it just feels like a mid to late 60s soulful song. Just a soul song. It's just so great, you know. Three Dog Night, same thing. You know, they were kind of doing that same thing too, you know. Then we get the next song. Um, I think this is definitely a highlight here. Well, what am I saying? Every song here is a highlight. But I think this one specifically, you know, if I had a maybe at least three highlighted songs off this album, I would probably put Brown Sugar at one, Two Wild Horses, and then this song. And then, of course, you know, can't hear me knocking, Sister Morphine. Oh, who doesn't love Sister Morphine? Great song. Um, by the way, I, I forgot to mention on the Gotta Move. This this was uh, a song that they uh, that a Fred McDowell and Gary Davis. This was a, that, this was a song done by them, but they they kind of had a tribute to them, kind of if you will. So I don't know. Maybe I got the blues was sort of a well, it was written by them, but you know what I mean. Um, so anyways, yeah, um, so Sister Morphine, you know, it's a five minute song, um, uh, Marion Faithful, hey, you know, she kind of got credited to this song, although people, you know, although, uh, Mick Jagger says that it was more of, of, of a song that he did, but, uh, she put it out as a single on the London record label back in May of 68. But um, due to the fact that it's about drugs, it's about, you know what I mean? <laughs> they uh, they decided to scrap it off and, you know. But yeah, she made it as a single and she did it off of the rock and roll circus movie. She, she sung that song um, from, from that movie. But anyways, um, really great. You know, obviously it's about, uh, you know, they mentioned about a girl being down in the basement, shooting up uh, needles and... You know, while I'm down here uh, with the needle and spoon, you know. Because, you know, early 70s was about drugs, you know. It was about taking heroin, you know. It was all about that. Um, really just desperate and very provocative, or uh, excuse me, um, heroinic, heroin lyrics, you know. Um, really great acoustic intro by Keith, of course. Um, and the slide with guitar here, which is kind of a little bit backed in the mix a little bit, is played by Ry Cooter. Excellent. And I believe, which I'm pretty sure, if I'm not mistaken here, because I know Bill Wyman, he plays, um, he plays an electric piano off of You Gotta Move, which I believe that he did. Um, yes, he did. But um, I know one of these songs he didn't do bass on, so I'm pretty sure it was either Bill or Keith that does the really deep bass. Um, we got Jack Nietzsche here, um, piano, very distant piano mixing in the back with reverb. And Mick Taylor is excellent with that, electric flourishing as well. Um, it's, it's, it's just a rich, really good moving song, you know. Um, great. Sister Morphine. Then we get the fourth track here. This is called Dead Flowers. Um, really, really good song. Oh my God, just another excellent song here. So, um, since we got electric opening for the first time by Mick Jagger, this time he opens with an acoustic. So this is the first time with an acoustic and opening. Acoustic opening to this song here. 
really great. Excellent. Um, we also got Electric here by, uh, by Mick Taylor and as well as Keith. Um, he does also do some opening. He also does some, uh, you also hear him kind of do the, you know, acoustics as well throughout the track by Keith. Um, this song I really love. This is, this is such an excellent song. Um, and we got, all, we got good old Stu. Hey, where, where's Ian being? Where's, uh, where's the Stu been at? He plays piano here, but of course he's back in the mix. Um, this is such a biting song. This is, this is about, you know, you know, hey, you know, about drugs, of course, drug related. You know, send me dead roses in the morning. Send me dead roses at my mailbox. And send me uh, roses in my wedding and even in my grave, you know. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty much about, you know, a, a person being addicted to heroin and, you know. And, of course, also in the last track, too, as well. But, you know, this is great. Dead dead Flowers, really great. It's, it's a rocking... Um, very much a really nice paced song, you know, which we get to our last track here. Last track, Moonlight Mile. What a great one. Excellent, excellent ending. Hey, great. Mick Jagger, once again, acoustic on here. Um, we don't get Keith Richards at all here on this track, um, but we do get Electric done by Mick um, and Paul Buckmaster once again. He provides the string arrangements on this and it's so beautiful right at the right at the two minute tail end there of the song really great three minute or whatever um fantastic jim price also provides the the trumpet piano once again on this track this is an excellent song excellent ending to this album you know what i mean great great man moonlight mile you know it's about a you know someone that's on the rise of fame and perhaps has fallen due to uh you know drug addiction so you know this album is basically about you know it, you know hitting up on drugs you know all that sort of stuff man what a i can't say enough about sticky fingers you know what i mean but hey that's just me so my next album i'm going to review so here's the deal for my for well you know what the next album is going to be right exile on main street I'm going to do, since it's a double, well, yeah, it's a double album, right? What I'm going to do is, is I'm going to split it up into two parts. Well, the first disc as one video, and then the second disc can be for part two. Because, uh, you know, if I was to be reviewing <laughs> Exile Main Street, I would probably be here forever. But anyways, two parts for Exile on Main Street. But once again, classic album. Sticky Fingers, right? Great stuff. 51 years. Man, it still holds up very, very well. Thanks, guys, for watching. Take care. Bye-bye.